So today we're going to be going over a uh, push day. Now this is from a cool minute ago. This is from like, I want to say uh, either early February or like mid-February, um, early earlier in the semester for sure. And um, yeah, so this is, uh, I'm currently like recording this voiceover on June 13th is is today so um i kind of like being able to go over videos like this um from just in the retrospective because you get to see a lot of things from a different angle you know things you like things you uh think you made better and just some things that like i'll go over in this video that i felt like were unnecessary so this is just a push day so for me on push days i'm doing chest shoulders and um really that's the main thing just kind of upper body movements that don't include the back pushing movements bench press shoulder press um didn't do many things with the side or rear delts and that's something that i've um definitely emphasized going into the cut that started in march so uh, it's kind of interesting looking back on this training just seeing uh, what was lacking in a way so yeah here we are um just started warming up and now I'm officially at my last warm-up weight, which is 185. Um, here, I will say I wasn't going my absolute heaviest. It was more about going heavier and just focusing on the technique and um, getting a little bit of a higher rep range than I'm used to. I'm used to doing reps of uh, two to five on bench. So this was definitely um, an interesting experience looking back because I think I was doing like 185 for like six or seven, and I usually don't go that high. I usually don't go past five. Um, so yeah, um, my technique on bench has changed. I don't want to say like quite a bit. Uh, mainly just like I try to keep my feet flatter on the ground, get a wider base, um, and make sure that my bar path is pushing more straight back towards my head or towards the rack. Either way you want to look at it. Um, here I'm going more straight up, closer grip, uh, super compressed, and, and one thing I do like when I'm looking at these videos is I can tell that my shoulder seems like it's in a very healthy position. Um, shoulder health is one of the main things I I like to emphasize on the bench press just because you see a lot of people who you look up to, um, you know, the superheroes, the Arnolds, and the people like that, and, and they talk about how they had to stop bench pressing just because, you know, they're uh, their shoulders went bad or you know they pulled something collarbone injury so uh, shoulder health is something I always try to um, keep intact with the range of motion I'm going on the bench so then yeah I just did 205 that's like the heaviest I went this day and to be honest wasn't really my best day um, it's kind of funny looking back on it just 205 looks so heavy it's crazy and uh, I guess now I'm just kind of doing back down sets of 185. I somewhat remember this day. It's just that um, when you go to the gym six days a week, it's kind of hard to keep track of every single push day. So I, I would be lying to you if I said I remember what I was feeling in this exact moment. Um, but I definitely know I wasn't. I was probably at RPE like seven this entire workout. And that's kind of a blanket statement. But. Um, for the most part, I was not pushing myself extremely, extremely hard just because I knew that um, my second push day of the week, since I do the same movement, but just with higher intensity, I knew I wanted to um, just get myself prepped for that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, now I think this is my last set. And I want to say we got 195 on the bar. Um, and here, like I said, I'm pushing it because I haven't been going hard this entire workout. So, uh, yeah, usually a back, a back down set should be, uh, a lighter weight and should be a lot easier, but this was higher than my working weight. So interesting. Um, one thing I did right after bench was go straight into dips and I would do, I would just warm up with body weight dips. I really like the range of motion I get on dips. I see a lot of people do dips faster and they do like a really shorter range of motion, but I like feeling the full stretch and I feel like it's better for my elbows because um, I don't know. There's just something about when you go fast on dips, it, it just, 
I don't know, maybe it's just the way it looks to me, but I just don't necessarily like the way it feels either. I like being able to feel the full stretch of the movement. And so here, as you can see, I just started adding weight. So I got a 45 on there. Might be a 45 and some change. Let's see. I can't tell from this angle. Um, but weighted dips have become uh, easily one of my favorite movements, one of my favorite accessories to train uh, just because... I don't do a ton of tricep training anymore and you'll see in this video I actually did do tricep training in this portion but um, being able to do uh, these weighted dips was really cool because like I feel it in my triceps I feel it in my inner chest everything is just burning lactic acid just burning 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 so I really feel the pump and really feel the stretch uh, coming off of the bench press which is really cool because obviously I, you're really tight and compressed after doing that kind of movement and plus I mean look at that angle it just looks sick right like you feel like a superhero look like a superhero got the forearm veins popping out and it's it's winter time it's 30 degrees outside you know can't complain um, so after that I, and this is kind of funny looking back so I would go into a like incline um, dumbbell press movement just like incline bench as you can tell, my angle of the bench is pretty high. It's almost like dang near a shoulder press at this point because it's definitely past 45. Uh, so that's something I've changed a lot. I actually do flat and I do incline now, um, like both on the same day, and I do those back to back. So, um, yeah, I, I don't train like this anymore. This was like super high. This angle was super high, and I felt like I was weak. But in reality, the higher the angle, you know, the different groups you're working this was definitely a lot of my front delts. I felt the burn in my shoulders more than anything. Um, so that's changed a little bit. Um, actually, it's changed a lot of it, to be honest with you. But yeah, as you can see, I kind of did this to um, start training the upper chest because I felt like that was something that um, I kind of neglected in training, to be quite honest with you. So I can, I can happily say now I train my upper chest more than than I do with you know just doing flat so it's pretty cool and uh, back to what I was saying about the tricep training so here we're just doing some like push downs um, individual I like doing one arm things for triceps when I do triceps just so like I said you can really feel the stretch um, especially at the bottom half of this movement and I actually learned this uh, particular super set from a guy named Eugene Tao so shout out to him this really did help to define my triceps and um, this is before I started cutting and you can really see after the cut just how defined I was able to get them from doing this uh, this kind of tricep work and to be honest I might bring it back just because you know I'm a guy and I want to build my bench up and and part of building your bench up is the tricep I know a lot of people think oh the only way to get better at benching is benching but no it's not true you, you have to focus on the accessories too so uh, shoulder strength tricep strength those accessories are going to help you build a stronger bench. Um, <laughs> that's Gage saying, let's go in the background. We're getting hype out here. I would have included his videos in this, but if I would have done that, this would have been like a 20 minute video. So I promise you when we, when I start showing some PRs, I will include his videos. So sorry about that Gage. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely an elite cameraman for sure. I mean, look at the look at the camera angle on that. I mean, come on now, come on now, come on now. And uh, right here, yeah, this so this um, half of the super set I really enjoyed. You could really feel the stretch, and like if you're, I know it looks like it's not a ton of weight on the actual cable itself, but I'm telling you, if you really don't cheat yourself and, and don't allow yourself to use momentum as you can see I'm holding the back of my tricep still so I'm fully just using um, just fully isolating that muscle and, and there you go like just failed on it so definitely one of my favorite tricep movements and so after that I would go straight into standing dumbbell shoulder presses um, for whatever reason I like training these individually like um on each arm separately I just felt the burn quite a bit now as you can see as I'm as I'm using the heavier weight and this is a critique that I can I can definitely tell um, 
my obliques were super involved in the movement and not to the point where I'm just using momentum the whole time, right? But your back has to be stable and it's kind of in a weird position. Like there's times I could feel my lower back. Um, well, th that's the thing. There's times I could feel my lower back in a shoulder movement, right? So that is one reason I feel like the seated dumbbell raise might be a little bit of a, of a better option or just a different option. Um, but for me, I, I just enjoy doing this because I would go, I would start from 50, go down five pounds, and I would do basically like sets of five. So I would do five sets on my right, uh, five sets on my left, then go down to 45. Same thing, go down to 40. And I would do a pyramid all the way down to, I believe, 22.5, and then back up to like 40. And so I would do this back to back, no rest. So like, as you can see, the reason I kept all these different clips in, you're probably going to be like, wow, this is so redundant. He has all these clips in. Um, I kept all these clips in because I'm doing this literally back to back. And one thing I like about doing this back to back is instead of focusing on how much weight I'm moving, I'm focused on really like um, just the lactic acid in your shoulder and you really have to fight it. Right. The only rest I'm getting is when I'm walking back to put the dumbbell back. So. Um, definitely a unique kind of way to work out that I kind of um, I kind of did on my own to be honest like I didn't really get advice for, from anyone on this I just I just feel like with shoulders the goal isn't to you know uh, oh I, I overhead press this much like I'm really not worried about PRs on overhead press too much 135 was nice I will admit it was nice hitting that but with that being said it's more about um, just getting um, the full stretch of the movement and making sure that I can really feel the pump of the muscle. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I think this is a lower weight and it'll go back up in a second. And when you start going back up, I mean, it, it feels like, it feels like a ring of fire. Like you're just, you're just on that outer layer and the closer, you're closer and closer you get to finishing, um, you know, you, you start to lose some brain cells. You, your, your mind goes numb you feel a little lightheaded, <laughs> but you got to just push through it. So, um, yeah, this is one of the maybe second to last set. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is the last set right here. And you could tell the energy has popped up because I'm glad I finally get to be done after this set. But, um, yeah, this is a, this is a burner right there. I, I would definitely check it out. I think, and I take that back. I think I got inspiration from this, from uh, Bart Kwan in one of his videos, like a couple years back. And uh, last but not least, I had to finish out with the, the 100 push-ups. So, yeah, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.